So in this video we'll look at the physical properties of alkanes and then that'll lead us on to alkenes as well, the next family of compounds. And then it becomes very repetitive. So some of the ideas that we'll talk about in this hopefully will allow us to carry those through all the organic families. Uh, just in terms of the alkanes, hopefully you're happy now with the meth, eth, pro, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, dec. That stands for the number of carbons in the carbon chain. And then the ane part, that indicates that it is an alkane and that there is only single carbon carbon bonds, you see. There's no other oxygens off there. There's no double bonds between the carbons. There's no triple bonds between the carbons. Uh, and obviously hydrogens can only ever have one bond because they have one electron uh, in total and one electron, one valence electron if you like. Uh, and that's all, the, uh, if you like, each one of them laid out in uh, order of the first 10. Now, normally we kind of go up around, for the alkanes, it's probably the family that we go furthest into, so around octane maybe perhaps. But again, uh, it's very, very straightforward. You connect the carbons, that's the backbone. And remember we looked at isomers in one of the other videos. So today I just want to talk about what, what sort of physical properties and the chemical properties of each of the, the these this family shares actually that they would share. So in terms of methane, that's the gas that is used in laboratories for Bunsen burners. So you know that that's a gas if you like. Uh, ethane is a gas as well. Um, that's a, a combustible gas as well. Propane, you might know of that from its use in um, fire lighters or that type of thing. Uh, that's propane, it's also a gas. Butane, you would know that from barbecues or households can buy drums of butane. When you start heading into pentane then and hexane, you start heading into compounds that are liquid. At, at, at room temperature so obviously you know depending on what temperature you're at whether or not something will be a liquid I mean these can be turned into a uh, these top ones methane and that can be turned into a liquid as well that is possible of course but when I'm talking about whether they're liquid or not I'm talking about room temperature uh, and let's presume that to be 25 degrees celsius now pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane and indeed decane they're all in petrol now they're quite volatile and that's why they're useful in petrol because they can be vaporized easily in a carburetor before they're put into, that means they're effectively mixed with air uh, and then they're put in, uh, it's a, a fuel air mix that goes into the piston then. So they're great for, for combustion and that's why they're used in combustion engine. Um, but each one of those, if you like, is, is a, a fundamental uh, member of the family. And as you see, as you go down through them, you, the chain gets longer. Consequently, obviously, we're adding a CH2 each time. If you look at, I mean, a pattern in maths, there you have a pattern in maths. The CH2 is increasing. That's what's being increased every time. A one carbon and two hydrogen has been added as you go down this family. And the point that we want to make here is, is that their chemical properties obviously have everything to do with their structure and the molecular formula what they're made up of. And the fact that these later ones, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, that they're liquid at room temperature, what that has got to do with is the fact that you have to think about why two molecules would, two molecules of pentane, I mean, would be attracted to each other. And it's quite simply back to the simple idea that positive is attracted to negative. And the reason that pentane will have a significant enough attraction at room temperature as opposed to butane has quite simply got to do with the number of electrons that are present for what type of bonding would be possible here. And it is of course the sloshing of electrons. Van der Waals forces. You do have sloshing here but at room temperature that sloshing of electrons as electrons are go over and back in a molecule, much like water tossing forward and back in a bottle. That happens in molecules, all molecules, polar and nonpolar. But these are nonpolar molecules because if you were to look up hydrogen's electronegativity, it'd be in around 2.1. 
And if you look up carbon, it'd be in or around 2.5. So you see, there is no significant difference in electronegativity. So that means that within each one of these bonds, the electrons that we say are effectively being shared fairly. And what that means then is that you don't have a positive, permanent positive end and permanent negative end. So they're not dipole attractions. If I had another pentane right here, then it obviously would not, there's no permanent positive end, permanent negative end. But remember, electrons are not stationary in molecules. They're constantly sloshing over and back, over and back. And this sloshing over and back leads to temporary dipoles being set up. Temporary positive end, temporary negative end. If the electrons happen to be over here for a split second, or the majority of them, it gives it an ever so slightly, uh, that's doing something there, the delta negative. And over on this end, ever so slightly, delta positive. And what this leads to then, is an, as an uneven, if you like, sharing of electrons for a split second giving rise to a slightly positive end. And if this was another pentane right here, well, this positive end here would pull on its electrons, making just for a split second before they flip back again and go in the opposite direction. And this is why pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, while in the same family as methane, ethane, propane, and butane, are liquids at room temperature. They quite simply have more electrons to slosh over and back. And when a molecule has more electrons, those temporary dipoles that I mentioned are stronger. And because they're stronger, this gives rise. So these, the boiling point rises for that very reason. These will boil at a much higher temperature the further down you go. Because there's more electrons to slosh over and back. The slightly negative end, when you do get the electrons over here on this end of non-N, leaves a slightly positive end here, and it's slightly stronger. And this has a difference in its boiling point, and that's what leads to it. The uneven sharing of electrons for a split second. Not because there's a different electronegativity, but because there's a sloshing of electrons. Now think about that, as you go down the family, you're going to have more electrons in the, the, the backbone. Therefore, more electrons will slosh over and back. Therefore, consequently, you will have a higher melting and boiling point. Boiling point is what we talk about in this, this family. The other thing I would say to you is that as you go down through this family, the same principle, and this is for all organic chemistry, applies when we talk about solubility. Now the only thing here is you need to think about, if you look up here for a, a split second in, in terms of, uh, like if we were to talk about, for a split second, we were to talk about water. Remember water has a, a hydrogen, two hydrogens bonded to an oxygen like so. You have a slightly negative oxygen and both hydrogens are slightly positive. And remember that has got to do with electronegativity as well. The reason that these hydrogens don't have as much control over these two electrons that are being shared is because oxygen is up at 3.5 and hydrogen is down at 2. Point, or oxygen, I'll, I'll double check that one now. Um, uh, it's up around, that's actually 3 if I remember correctly, but let me double check that. Oh no, it is 3.5. So it's in or around 3.5, Pauling's exclusion number. So it is 3.5. And then if we were to go to another water molecule, there's a hydrogen up here. Hydrogen, I should probably put a circle around them all. Hydrogen and an oxygen here. So that's a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And there you have a strong bond between that delta positive hydrogen and that delta, which you remember is, is just means slightly, and for our sake, there's the attraction. The attraction exists between them for the very reason. Um, so this attraction right here exists because slightly negative oxygen, slightly positive. 
hydrogen and likewise up here it's the same thing there's a the negative hydrogen and there's a slightly positive hydrogen and they're a whole lot of tossing around and they roll around each other as we've talked about many times and this is why it's held as a liquid and not a gas at room temperature not a gas indeed all the way up to 100 degrees celsius which is you know relative to our experience at a high temperature but if you bring in a non-polar molecule like the alkanes where you only have the sloshing of electrons over and back to give any rise to a slightly negative end or a slightly positive end it just cannot now obviously you're in class i'll be asking you questions about this rather than me just telling you but this is the situation we're in this slightly positive is like yeah it just cannot break into it's more that the water won't allow it in than it the non-polar molecule wants to get in you know the water molecules are all clinging to each other they're all stuck to each other with a stronger attraction whereas the non-polar molecule comes along it cannot get in between those for that very reason that it doesn't have a significant negative end, a significant positive end. Now if you think about that, that's, that's fairly different to, to um, what you would have studied at junior cert and that no, no real mention is made of such things. But just remember that to help you. Now that will take you all the way through. And the, the thing is, the larger the molecule then if we went down this family, not alone are they non-polar, but again you still have the sloshing of electrons having a large non-polar part makes you even more difficult to, to dissolve in water. More difficult to get in between the strong or to get down to these members. Much more difficult. Because not alone now are you non-polar. You don't have a significant positive and significant negative end. But you're also very, very large. So you cannot fit between the water molecules. So there's loads of things going on there. But really it comes back to simple things. Hydrocarbons, these hydrocarbons, which are made, these alkanes are made out of non-polar bonds. The molecules can give rise to polarity, but it is temporary due to the sloshing of electrons. And that's why you can liquefy them. They're very insoluble in water for the reasons we just said. Water molecules cling together, excluding these non-polar molecules. And then if we were to talk about... Um, you know other members we will look you can change the end of these molecules and that but just remember that there's a significant difference uh, and why those things occur physical properties alkanes are colorless uh, these are probably more straightforward things alkanes are non-polar molecules we've gone through that and the melting and boiling points have got to do I think we've mentioned most of the reasons why remember that those weak sloshing of electrons Look, at the boiling point does increase. It does go up as the chain gets longer because the temporary dipoles are also longer. Uh, and then we will go on to the alkenes. But I think there's a lot of chemistry in that. So if you understood that chemistry in this video, I think that would be very, very good for your future. So you should watch this video a couple of times. Get your ideas around again, revision. You know how fundamental electronegativity is to our understanding of organic chemistry. Any chemistry, really. I mean, it gives rise to melting points, boiling points, and we have talked about those before.